Just a quick update before we get into things. Normal Boots is back, and we are ranking every 3D Mario platformer in our new show called Gamer Tears. It's got laughs, love, rage, and tears. Make sure you check it out. Did you know? Super Mario 3D World's character roster was almost completely different. While it's true that 3D World's four base characters are the same ones that appeared in Super Mario Bros. 2, the game's developers have said that that actually wasn't their inspiration. It just kind of turned out that way. In the previous game in the series, New Super Mario Bros. U, Princess Peach played her traditional role as the damsel in distress, while four men ventured off to save her. She wasn't originally planned as a playable character in 3D World either. However, series producer Yoshiaki Koizumi wanted to add her for the sake of female representation. He said, I feel like Mario games have done lots of representation of male characters over the years, perhaps much more so than female. So it's actually really nice to be able to have a female playable character in the game. But Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to include her for an entirely different reason, saying, I would add that cat women are sexy and I wanted to see what a cat peach would look like. Haha. Uh -huh. The devs also considered Yoshi, but ultimately decided his moveset just wasn't needed. They said Yoshi's trademark flutter jump is kind of redundant when you've already got Peach's hover jump. Yoshi's eating ability is also already covered by the piranha flowers you can pick up to gulp down your enemies. And besides, 3D World already has a new rideable dinosaur, Plessy, who, unlike Yoshi, can fit four humans on her back at once. In a Japanese magazine Did You Know Gaming had translated, the devs had said that after adding Princess Peach, they still wanted to add one more female character character. They thought about making Daisy unlockable in the post game, but ultimately decided she wasn't special enough, as her silhouette is just too similar to Peach's. They ended up picking Rosalina instead, reasoning that each of the game's worlds takes Mario higher and higher, so it makes sense that he'd eventually enter outer space. In that same magazine, the devs pointed out that long before 3D World was available to the public, Rosalina and the post game were actually hinted at in the game's promotional artwork. If someone happened to zoom way into the top corner, they would have discovered the Comet Observatory hiding behind the final Bowser world. When 3D World was brought over to the Nintendo Switch, the game almost got even more female representation. Peeking inside 3D World's internal data reveals the developer spent some time working on Toadette as a new playable character, the same way she was added to New Super Mario Bros. U, when that game was ported to the Nintendo Switch just a couple of years earlier. In Super Mario Bros. U, Toadette runs faster and stops quicker than Mario, Luigi, and Toad. She can also transform into Peachette, who uses her dress to glide through the air. Rooting around in the internal data for 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, a modder named Nicolox discovered 214 animations created just for Toadette, as well as a voice clip meant for the character select screen. Here I go! Unfortunately, the internal data does not include her character model, but Toadette does make a small cameo appearance in Bowser's Fury in her Captain Toad outfit. By applying the Bowser's Fury model to 3D World's unused data, we can see that Toadette had animations for all 3D World's movesets, cutscenes, and power-ups. However, there are no traces of a Peachette transformation, so it seems she probably would have relied on boosted stats, like faster running and acceleration, or maybe higher jumps. Mario Galaxy 2's director was Koichi Hayashida, a man who considers himself something of a Miyamoto scholar. He carries around a notepad with him that has every piece of advice Miyamoto ever gave him, and he even gives seminars preaching Miyamoto's development philosophies. After finishing Galaxy 2, he went to Miyamoto and pitched his idea for a new sort of Mario game, a 3DS title that could bridge the gap between 2D and 3D Mario. The central focus was bringing back the classic goal pole, but this time in three dimensions. Hayashida said he was a nervous wreck pitching the goal pole and was relieved when when Miyamoto enthusiastically approved of his idea. But after 3D Land was finished and it was time to make a sequel on the Wii U, Hayashida felt the goal pull had actually become a limitation he wanted to get rid of. He realized a lot of the fun in the previous 3D Marios was the element of searching, like hunting for stars and giant sprites. So Hayashida's team experimented with open world stages for 3D World. 
and he went to Miyamoto to ask permission to leave goal poles in the past and to try something different. However, Miyamoto told him the goal poles had to stay. But Hayashida still wanted to incorporate that element of searching, so his team came up with a new style of gameplay based on miniature 3D models called dioramas. While they were developing the idea, they realized those dioramas would have to be pretty big if Mario was allowed to jump in them. They wanted to make tiny worlds, but not big ones. And it was almost blasphemous to imagine taking away Mario's jumping ability. So they decided their idea was better suited for another franchise. And when they considered which Nintendo characters wouldn't necessarily jump, they all agreed Link from The Legend of Zelda would be the perfect fit. So the team built a tech demo and tried to get approval by Miyamoto, who was so puzzled by their presentation that he thought they were pitching him a physical product and asked how they were planning to manufacture them. But once they told Miyamoto the dioramas were actually for a video game, he rejected the proposal as well, but said it was good enough that they could use it in 3D World as a minigame. Racking their brains for a Mario character they could substitute for Link, they ultimately landed on Captain Toad from Mario Galaxy, reasoning that his backpack was so heavy he wouldn't be able to jump. In the end, six Captain Toad stages made their way into 3D World, and Miyamoto loved how they turned out so much that he let the devs spin it off into its own game, which released as Captain Toad Treasure Tracker a year later. Even with the Captain Toad rebrand, in many ways, Treasure Tracker is still a Zelda game at its core, which Hayashida says is why the game's first boss is a fire-breathing dragon, and this whole series of events probably also influenced the style of the next Zelda game, the remake of Link's Awakening, which was made to look like a diorama with a 10 centimeter Link. The game was even promoted with the real-life diorama at E3 2019. Not counting the Captain Toad stages, 3D World consists of 87 main levels. But during development, the Mario team came up with thousands of level ideas that didn't make the final cut. According to Hayashida, the first thing we do is decide on a concept for a stage that really drives how a player will be experiencing it. It's something we all get together to discuss. We get a lot of post-it notes and we just put up hundreds of them onto the wall and start looking at them and discussing them. And out of 100 ideas on all of these notes, we might end up only using one or two of these ideas generated. Some are completely crazy ideas. And it wasn't just unused level designs. According to co-director Kenta Motokura, the developers playtested tons of ideas that went unused in 3D World's final build. New Super Mario Bros. U has a multiplayer coin battle mode, where everyone competes to see who can get the most coins before reaching each stage's goal pole. In an interview we translated, the developers revealed that coin battle was their original consideration for multiplayer in 3D World as well. But at some point, they realized a scoring system had never been used in 3D Mario before. So instead of competing for coins in 3D World's multiplayer, they made it about competing for points. They even considered adding a special option for players who own a 3D TV, so the game could be played in actual 3D, just like its predecessor on the 3DS. But when they found out players were gonna have to wear 3D glasses, they decided a true 3D mode was probably more trouble than it was worth. 3D World's internal data reveals even more ideas that got scrapped from both the Wii U original and the Nintendo Switch versions. Stored with all the player icons, there's an unused hand icon which seems to imply the devs considered having a fifth player. In New Super Mario Bros. U, a fifth player could use the gamepad to make platforms, stun enemies, and pop bubbles to help others beat levels and nab all the collectibles. It appears a similar concept was explored for 3D World, but ultimately got cut. But there's also some unused music hiding in the data. The track you're hearing now was labeled Test Beat Sync, which suggests the developers were using it to experiment with beat block stages. That said, it doesn't sync up with the two beat block stages used in the game's final build. Both those stages have blocks that shift on a consistent beat, but the test track sounds like it was made for a beat block stage that shifts on an inconsistent beat, which might have looked something like this. The data also shows that at one point, Captain Toad was capable of using cannon boxes, and with hacking, he can still use them in the final build. Now, let's talk about what's hiding in Bowser's Furies data, like the new item called the Giga Mushroom, which can still be accessed with hacks. To be clear, this isn't the old Mega Mushroom seen in past Mario titles. This is the Giga Mushroom. Touching it as normal Mario temporarily turns him into a gigantic Giga Mario. 
and when Cat Mario touches it, he turns into Giga Cat Mario. The developers clearly put work into this new item, but they never got around to setting up a camera angle for it, and for some reason, ended up deciding not to include it in Bowser's Fury. Another interesting hint is that the internal files responsible for Fury Shadows are labeled Shadow Mario Data, suggesting that instead of Luigi, it was originally supposed to be Shadow Mario running around Lake Lapcat, which actually makes a lot of sense when you consider his reoccurring role in Isle Delfino and all the similarities between Sunshine and Bowser's Fury. But even though many of the team's ideas were never realized, one of the best features that got used in 3D World wasn't an idea, it was actually a mistake. Monokura explained the accidental creation of the Double Cherry just after the game's launch, saying, Well, actually, we discovered that when a staff member made a mistake with the placement tool and put in two player Marios. When we saw that, we thought, it was great. So we went ahead and put that into the game. It was completely by chance. We scrambled to readjust the game so this feature would make it into the final product. If the game had locked up with two identical characters on the level, I don't think we would have the Double Mario feature we have now. Miyamoto added that if their accident-prone coder had simply fixed their mistake without alerting the team to its potential, Double Cherries would never have existed. Another coincidence that impacted 3D World was that its release just so happened to coincide with the 30th anniversary of Mario Brothers on the Famicom Disk System, the first game Nintendo acknowledges Luigi's appearance in. After Nintendo informed Hayashida they were going to celebrate 2013 as the Year of Luigi, he personally rewrote the code of Mario Brothers to create Luigi Bros, a mini-game starring two Luigis that he added to 3D World's title screen. His team also hid dozens of pixel Luigis throughout the game. Some of them are tiny, like the one that pops out of the World 1-2 icon if you wait long enough, and another you can see out running the bullet build train in World 3. There's also some huge pixel Luigis, like off the coast of the game's first castle, and the Man in the Moon Luigi you can only see in the beam of the dark stage if you hit the goal pole with 30 seconds left on the timer. Many pixel Luigis were also hidden in New Super Luigi U, and continued long after the year of Luigi ended, in games like Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, Super Mario Odyssey, and even in Bowser's Fury. Most of the Luigis in Lake Lapcat haven't been found yet, so if you spot one, let us know in the comments down below where you found it. Speaking of Luigi, he's also objectively the best character in the game, at least according to Luigi Master, the fastest 3D world player on the planet. Capable of reaching and defeating Meowser in under 90 minutes, Luigi Master holds the world record speed run in both the Wii U and Switch games. He was actually the world champion when this video entered production, lost the crown as we were finishing it up, and then took it back before the video went live. While he was duking it out for the world record, he generously took time to sit with Digino Gaming and explain just what exactly makes Luigi so good. Luigi Master said, Since Luigi is the most slippery character, he can crouch jump and vector better than the other characters. And on Switch, roll jumping then crouch jumping is even faster than cat moment him, and Luigi's great at both of those maneuvers. To elaborate, by roll jumping, then immediately crouch jumping, players can build crazy momentum to blaze through entire stages in a matter of seconds. A lot of 3D World fans probably don't know what vectoring even is. As Luigi Master explains it, vectoring is when you curve a jump left and right in mid-air, which gains even more speed. When Nintendo revealed the Switch version was to increase all the characters' running speeds, many fans predicted it would have a huge effect on the speedrunning community, but in reality, it didn't have much of an effect at all, as the top players don't spend a lot of time actually running. They've got much better ways to get ahead, like the roll jump crouch jump combo, and of course, the incredible speeds only possible with the cat suit. While running speeds were increased on the Switch, their jump height was also decreased, but Luigi can still jump higher than everyone else, so he's still capable of clearing some jumps that other characters could only achieve on the Wii U. Although to be fair, Luigi Master admits there are some stages that are faster with other characters, so Luigi does get a few well-earned breaks over the course of a 90-minute speedrun. From unused gamepad features to game modes and all those unused level ideas, Hayashida and his team had more than enough leftover ideas to build a sequel. He said a hypothetical Mario 3D World 2 would probably use even more of the Wii U's gamepad features, like the touchscreen, microphone, gyroscope, and motion sensing. 3D World was the second best-selling game on the Wii U, which was definitely enough to justify a follow-up. But disappointing sales of the console itself shattered the possibility of a Wii U sequel. In fact, 
a lot of the gamepad features eventually got cut from the Nintendo Switch version, like blowing into the microphone to scatter the enemies and move platforms. So if a sequel ever gets made, it'll be impossible for it to be the sort of game Hayashida originally envisioned. But who knows, maybe we'll get something even better. And if you want more Mario stuff, check out Gamer Tears, where we ranked every 3D Mario platformer ever. And if you want something a little more classic, I just recently re-completed Super Mario World. Check those videos out right here. Thanks for watching.